Greetings everyone and welcome back to another cheapo phone review. In today's one, I want to revisit a brand that we haven't looked at in quite a long time. That's Xcody. Xcody are about a tiny little step up above welcome devices. Essentially what they are is a brand that just rebrands welcome devices into their own, which is Xcody, and then sell them cheap and that's how they have a business or something. The last phone I did have a look at was one that Xcody themselves actually sent to me, so I'll cut it up there if you want to take a look at that, because I read Xcody's full entire story that's actually available on their website, which is a very heartfelt story if you ask me. But the phone I'm taking a look at today is one of the newer Xcodies that I have. I think it came out about two years ago, but it does promise quite a few things and I just want to investigate and see if it's any good. Before I continue on, I'll just let you all know now about the timestamps so you can skip along to wherever you need to be because we are going to be taking a look at the advertising for this because there are quite a few funny pictures and I just thought I'd showcase them as I usually do. But otherwise, if you want to skip past this, feel free to use the timestamps in the description and pin comment below. And usually at this point in time, I'd start telling you all what the title of this is on a listing on some random website. However, this is not available anywhere anymore, as far as I can tell. It may pop up as a secondhand unit, but they don't sell it new. They've replaced it with their more modern looking designs, which is that a good thing that this XCOD can't be bought anymore? I'm pretty sure it is. But we have the main features, which this is the Xcode S20 Plus. The OS is Android 9.0, which I can say that is not the case. It reckons it's got an MT6737 quad core 1.3 gigahertz processor, 16 gigs of internal storage, as well as two gigs of RAM. Networks, we have 2G, 3G, and 4G, which is quite surprising. The display is a 6.53 inch 19 by nine water drop full screen, which the box doesn't match the phone, but that's the box that matches the phone. That makes sense. The resolution is also 520 by 1520. We have an 8 megapixel rear camera and a 5 megapixel front camera. GPS support, Wi-Fi support, and Bluetooth support. It also supports a whole bunch of languages. It has Face ID, which is nothing special. It just takes a photo with the front camera and says, yep, that's the person who's unlocking the phone. Unlock the phone. We also have a detachable battery. That's 3000 milliamp hours, but that's also kind of not the case as well. Now, the advertising for this device shows that we have a fingerprint sensor on the back, but that's actually not correct. So I'm not sure what's going on with that, but it's definitely the S20 Plus that I have. It's beyond limitation with a bigger screen, faster network, and out of imagination. Out of imagination that they stole a design, or out of imagination that they ran out of ideas and just rebranded a cheap welcome device as their own. You can take it either way. It has a 6.6 inch water drop screen now, and there's a kayak just on the phone in the water. Just agree with it, I think. Xcode S20 Plus sports a 6.6 inch water drop screen with high 19 by 9 aspect ratio, providing you ultra wide vision and shocking visual experience while you are watching TV or surfing the internet. 2.5D curved glass makes a whole screen full of aesthetics of arc design, offering you seamless touch and better holding experience. Well, that's a big lie because as you can see in the picture, the phone's completely flat. This has an ice crystal back cover design, whatever that means. Well, actually it explains. It's unique ice crystal plate design using geometric lines and 3D glass material, showing excellent grip and fashion texture, allowing you to easily master the mobile life with a person just sort of going wee off some sand there. The S20 Plus supports the 4G network with awesome underneath it because yes, daily drive Driving an Xcode is certainly awesome. Regardless of the destination of your journey, you can connect to the local mobile networks with your S20 Plus in most place. It'd be hilarious if it actually doesn't support Telstra, but we'll see. Powered by the MT6737 quad core processor and powerful 2 gig RAM, the S20 Plus deals with multitask in a high speed, delivering smooth responsiveness and lightning fast gaming experience. The 16 gig ROM provides massive storage for tons of games, photos, movies, and music. Also, just realize how much of their watermarks are all over these pictures. They really don't want anyone stealing these. We have the 5 megapixel front camera. The phone comes packed. 5 megapixel self snapper for allowing you to preserve your own smile or precious memory and outstanding clarity. One thing Xcody does do is slightly tweak the welcome advertising and fixes some spelling mistakes. Only some though. 8 megapixel rear camera. Perfect shots with a tap. Capture beautiful photos with the tap of a finger. From landscape photos to portraits, this camera can inspire you. And we have three cameras on the back. How many of them are real? You don't have to guess. You already know it's only going to be one. But Xcody nowadays are saying they're decorative cameras, so can't take that away from them. They have this advertising saying this photo has been post-processed and is not a picture taken directly on the phone, then why advertise it, silly? At least the hamster looks cute. He's like, aww. And finally, it promises that we have Pi on this, which, yeah, I'll get into that soon. All right, well, that's all of the advertising on the device. Let me show you the box of this thing, and we'll start taking a look around this. 
This was sent to me by a good friend of mine, Alex. We've been doing trades for like the last year or so now. And he found this at e-waste of all places. I wonder why it turned up there. But it seems to all work. I managed to get it working. I did feature this in one of my job lots recently where it was working and then it died. And then I brought it back to life by stealing a charger port from another device and sticking it in this. So it's been taken apart and I know what's inside of it. Actually, I don't really remember the internal layout, but I will get to that during the teardown. Otherwise, uh, x Cody, and that's the phone apparently, which is not correct because there's no water drop notch. It's a sort of an Oppo A73 looking design on the front sort of thing. And we have the X for x Cody linking people on x Cody. And surprisingly about this box, x Cody was following the trends of not including things because the box only just has a phone and a cable in it while the cable's been pinched. They're trying to save the environment. Good on you, x Cody. Because yeah, around the box, there's nothing really to note except for more branding. But on the back, we have the manufacturer and the production site and their phone number listed in several different languages. So that is x Cody right there. So this is who you would call if you have any dramas with this. You say, hey, I've just realized that this thing doesn't run Android Pie and it probably fakes specs. So I'll just ring these guys up and get a refund. If only it was that simple. We also have some certifications as well as a don't throw it in the bin, but it's ended up Away, so close enough. A sticker, which has, we've got the color blue, and S20+, plus 6.53 inch, 9.0, 4G, 2 plus 16, which is what the specs are claiming to be. And that's basically it around the box. And then inside this is just phone. You get phone out and that's it. There's no way that they could have put a power adapter. It's just a cable that they would have been able to throw in there and some instructions that are now long gone. Just very strange. I've never seen an x device that doesn't come with a power brick. Maybe the more expensive ones don't come with power bricks and their more cheaper ones do. I'm just trying to think of x logic. Anyways, the box is done. We don't need this anymore. Well, that's too far. We have the x device itself. Look at the back cover though. I've got to say that looks pretty intriguing. It's ripping off an Oppo or a Realme, maybe. Oppo or Realme, same thing. We have the x branding on the back there and the obvious three real cameras. Can you tell which one's the real one out of the three? It's pretty obvious. We also have an LED flash on the back. Around the phone, we have the SIM tray, which I'll pull out soon. At the top, I've got a 3.5 mil headphone jack, volume rocker, power button, nothing else. And at the bottom, we have a hole for a microphone, micro USB, as well as a speaker group. And the entire frame is plastic. The back is actually also glass, kind of in the premium range of cheapo devices. Adding glass doesn't make a premium, does it? No, it does. And the front of the device looks a little something like this. At the top, we have our front camera as well as our earpiece. And at the bottom, we also have the slightly big chin on it. It's a fairly uninspired Samsung S20 ripoff with just a water drop screen added to it. But enough of the design. Let's start actually taking a look at this thing and just see if it does have 4G, how performance is with gaming, if the specs are actually legit or not. And for the first time on an XGO, device, I can actually go into the hidden files and open them to see if they've actually installed anything that seems to be dodgy, like if we can actually change the specs of this. Which does remind me, I've also dumped the system files from this thing. They're in the description below, so feel free to go through them if you want, because I can tell you there are some stolen things in those files. There's also a welcome boot animation, as well as a power off animation. A further indication that they basically just take welcome phones, rebrand them as x and go, problem solved. SimTrace supports dual nano sims, or one nano sim and one micro SD card. Let's power this thing on. There we go. Now it actually stays on this screen for quite a long time, about a good minute and a half before we actually get it to kick in. So I'll just wait, give it time. Come on, buddy, you can do it. Ah, oh, there you go. No, oh, Jesus Christ. Now we can unlock. Oh, where's that being pinched from? I'll just. Of course, why not pinch the S3 sounds and put them on this? It changes the wallpaper every time too, which is pretty cool. Not that it's super fast, but uh, at least it works. And just going for a close up on the display as well, it's not the clearest on the block and definitely far from the sharpest. The colors and stuff so far don't look too bad. It's not too terrible, but it's not extremely great either. Now we do have 4G up the top, so we'll definitely have to test that soon. But the home screen looks pretty much like this. We have a clock widget at the top, Facebook, Google search, Google folder, camera settings, Play Store, phone, contacts, messaging, and Google Chrome. And if we swipe up, we have all of the apps. We've got browser, which I don't think is actually Google Chrome. I believe it's just the default Android browser that they've just stuck a Chrome logo on. Calculator, calendar, camera, clock, contacts, downloads, email, go. Usually when you see go, it's on a phone that's running 
Android Go edition, which means it has less than one gig of RAM. So not entirely sure of the specs at this point in time. Facebook, Face Unlock, File Manager, FM Radio, Gallery, Google Messaging, Music, Phone, Play Store, Search Settings, Sim Toolkit, Sound Recorder, Torch, and Voice Search. Not too much going on with this. Scrolling down, looks very Android 6, doesn't it? We've got shortcuts for Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, audio profiles, the Torch. Oh, let's test the Torch. I've already tested the Torch. It's not that bright. There you go. Wow. Um... It works if you're very close to an object, but far away, it's nothing. What we need are the LEDs that were on the DJ1000 phone stuck onto every device. That's what we need, because those things were powerful. Also, they have done some custom things to the OS, like notifications. It looks a little something like this instead of the default looking layout. And the power menu looks very Android 9-like. I'm pretty sure this layout was first featured on Android 9. Now, going into settings, you can see the layout is very similar to one of the Vulcan devices I've had a look at. I think it was the S30 Plus, possibly. It it looks pretty much exactly like this phone. I'm pretty sure the phone that I pinched the charger port from was that S30 Plus, I believe. The Galaxy S30 Plus. Anyways, let me go to Wi-Fi. We have 2.4 gigahertz as well as 5 gigahertz networks. That's not too bad. The standard Gboard just there. Okay, we're connected to Wi-Fi. We have Turbo Download. Uh, using Wi-Fi and 4G, 3G networks at the same time. I guess we'll just leave that. Well, actually, can't really use this because the SIM card doesn't have any credit on it. Bluetooth, nothing much to note in here. In SIM cards, it just shows the Telstra SIM card that I've put in there, as well as the phone number, but I can't actually change any settings within there. In data usage, I can go to the settings and go to cellular networks. It does say 4G. We'll go to network operators and just see if it shows Telstra 4G. There it is. They also have enhanced 4G LTE mode as well. So is that VO LTE? I'll have to give it a go. I think what I'll do is give this thing a call and test the earpiece quality and also find out what the default ringtone is. The mobile service you have called is currently unavailable. Please try again later. Well, that was fun. Telstra doesn't work on this. I go to call it and it can't connect to it. And see, I'm just losing signal. So let me try Optus. That should work. I should have taken note of the bands list because that probably would have told me right there that it doesn't support Telstra. Now for an Optus SIM in, let me see if this works. Your call couldn't be connected. Please check the number and try again. Okie dokie. Optus doesn't work either. I'm just going to test to see if it's the actual SIM slot. I mean, that could make sense. Maybe it's the SIM slot that's been damaged. That's why it was thrown out. Let me try this. I've switched back to my Telstra SIM. Let me try this now. The mobile service you have called is currently unavailable. Okay, so Optus doesn't work. Telstra doesn't work. Last ditch effort. I'll try Vodafone. And that's both SIM card slots as well. It recognizes the SIM cards. It says 4G, but I can't do anything past that. With a Vodafone SIM in, it doesn't do anything. It can't even connect to a network. So it probably does have 4G, but it's probably like one band and that's it because both Optus and Telstra done the exact same thing. I try and call it and it says it can't connect to it. That's the only thing I can think of is that the bands that were shown in the listing, which I'll show on screen, are probably not the case with this. It's probably just one or two random bands that they've chucked on there and went, ah, it's 4G, it's clearly 4G now. Then again, we have 3G still working, Telstra 3G still works, so why that didn't work, I'm not too sure either. I have tried every SIM card and it just doesn't want to work. It shows reception, then I call it, it just drops out. So I've got no idea, even setting it to 3G, that's what happens. I just lose complete connectivity. We have 3G still working. This SIM card works. I only used it yesterday to test a phone out. It's either this phone or Xcody. Up to you which one you want to pick. Well, I can't do a call test on this. I mean, it comes up as having 4G. It does show we can connect to a 4G network, but then after that, I can't do much. And just in case as well, yes, APNs are all set. That's not an issue. And I did put enhanced 4G LTE mode off just to see if that made a difference and that's a no-go as well. Not sure what's going on there, but I spent way too long trying to get SIM cards working. So let's continue on. More just says airplane mode, tethering, VPN, and cellular networks, which I've been into. Display, mirror vision, brightness level, magazine unlock, which we've seen. Let's take a look at the wallpapers on this thing. Where have they been pinched off? It's looking very Samsung-like. That's probably what they were going for. So that's Samsung, because I think that's been on my A31 or A12 or whatever I've got. That's probably also from Samsung. That I'm not too sure. That I'm also not too sure. Or maybe Huawei. Or that could be Samsung. That's iPhone, isn't it? Or is that Samsung? I really should know my default wallpapers, but I don't. There's a balloon. There's a fish and a triangle. That's a cool wallpaper. There's roses in a uh, triangle as well and some ribbons and a cityscape building thing. Uh not good with geography, I'm sorry. Black hole, bubbles, hollow spiral. I'm gonna choose the fish with the triangle because that's just cool. Also, I completely forgot to touch and hold on the main screen because we have all the wallpapers. Then we have themes, which we only just have one. Then we have sliding, which is the transition effects from window to window. And then we also have weather, 
if we have the weather widget on, will that actually show us stuff? Oh, there you go. Yeah, see, there you go. And we can have rain and all that sort of stuff going on. Where have I seen these? These have been on another device before. What does this button do? That's widgets. That's fair. I'll just stick with none for that. There you go. Might help performance. Navigation key, we can choose to hide the navigation bar as well as just the layout as well. MMS flashlight, which I'd say once you get a multimedia message, the flash will light up. Actually, let's see if it actually receives text messages. It could be just phone calls that don't work. Let's see if this works. Hello. And the flash went off too. I sent a text message to it with dick butt. I don't know what else to put. I usually just type in stupid things when I'm testing devices. So it receives text, but not calls. So I'd say it's a band issue. That just goes completely over my head, to be fairly honest. I'll just blame Xcode. It's probably easier. Sound notification. Actually, we'll just see what the default ringtone is. Would have been flutey phone. Okay. Sound enhancements. We have best order and best loudness and best surround. All the greatest enhancements you'll ever need, which I'll probably just put them all on. Why not? Storage and USB. 16 gigs of internal storage as well as 16 gigs for my micro SD card. Memory shows two gigabytes. Well, see if that's going to be correct later on. Battery is approximately seven hours left. When I started this review, I was at 89%. Now I'm down to 81%. Let's go into the application list real quickly. And I'll scroll through this to see if there's anything that I can open up later during Quick Shortcut Maker. So we might be able to change the specs or change some other things, but I'll just scroll through. Face unlock, we've got to try face unlock. Factory test, that's usual stuff as well. GBA service is not a Game Boy Advance service, I can tell you that. Uh, HTML viewer, nothing unusual there. Media storage, that could be possibly something. Principle search, set theme, set theme could be something. Switch app could be something. System UI is Marshmallow. Okay, so Android Pie is definitely not the case with this one. And that's about it within there. Once I get to Quick Shortcut Maker, we'll open a couple of those up and see what they do. Location's fairly self-explanatory. Security though, what do we have? Pattern, voice unlock, pin and password. So no fake fingerprint. That's a bit unfortunate. We do have face unlock though, which I just enroll face. Uh, we'll just do a pattern actually. There we go. Patterns are easier. Start enroll. Okay, yep, yep. Yep, we'll just agree with all of them. Let's go. Looked a little bit too serious there. That's okay. All right, so then now all I gotta do is just unlock. Shabam. Oh, it worked. Oh, make sure that wasn't a fluke. Oh, okay, well face unlock works, so that's a good thing. I will put a Gmail on this now. Google, we don't have to do much in, as well as language and input. Backup and reset is just gonna show backup and reset. That's correct. What do we have in accessibility? No services installed, so no talkback or anything. Quick boot, enable quick boot. If I enable this, I may break the phone, so I'm gonna leave that off. Printing, developer options I've had to put on due to dumping the system files. And finally, about phone. Wireless update. Maybe it needs an update. Oh, that could be it. Maybe it just needs an update to kick it in. Uh, there you go. Oh, we're already up to date. It's definitely an Xcode S20 Plus though, because it says it right there, S20 Plus. We have the IMEI info once again. Feel free to tell me if these have been pinched off anywhere or if they actually correspond to the Xcode S20 Plus. Sim status says we do have 4G and it's working, but yeah, it just doesn't want to work. And the serial number is 01234567898 ABCDF as well. Anything to note within baseband version, kernel version, or anything like that? Nothing that I can see that sticks out. 2000 19 though, but it could have been sold until 2020 most likely. The Android Easter egg is Pi, which you can pie. Well, that's everything in settings. So now I guess we just do like the browser test, do the YouTube test as well. I need to actually download YouTube onto this. I don't know if you've seen that, it said new in Android 6. Well, we already know it's Android 6 anyways. All right, I have another issue. I can't download anything on the Play Store. It says installing, but then it says download pending. What if I take out the uh, SIM card? Hang on. Okay, so my SIM card doesn't want to come out now. Give me back my SIM card, please. This thing's cursed. That's why it was thrown out at e-waste, because it's cursed. There we go. Don't ever do that. Now, if I take them out, can it actually download now? Oh, I seem to have got rid of the weather widgets. That's okay. I swear if this somehow works, I'll be surprised. Can anyone actually explain what's going on at this point in time? Because I just can't wrap my head around it. Let's just let that do its thing in the background, because let's open browser, which is obviously not Chrome. Let's see if it actually does work. Okay, good. We have Google. Let me type in Xgo. Cody, S, 
20 plus. And yeah, it was on AliExpress, but it's unfortunately out of stock. Loading, it's only AliExpress. Not loading a lot. Oh, geez, okay, the bit stretched there. I was gonna say, it's still in stock, but no, item temporarily unavailable, thank God. Yeah, 6.6 .6 inch. Actually, is that the display size? 6.6 .6 inch. It just died. Okay, that's fair. The display is 6.3 inches. I think it's told me like four different screen resolutions already. Oh, this is the S20 Lite with an MT6580 in it. Oh God, okay. Security warning with the website. Okay, <laughs> with the Xcode Design website. Security warning. $63 for a 5.5 inch unlocked phone with... It Did it just crash? Did the browser just crash? It did, didn't it? Just, oh, oh shit, was loading a JPEG. Okay, okay, continue on. We're all good. Don't worry, Xcody. We're gonna buy with confidence. You know, they have YouTube videos on there. Xcody has an official YouTube channel. Oh god. Whoa! Wow! Let's have a look at this. The phone's also getting extremely hot. <laughs> It's being pushed to its limits, the poor thing. We'll do 720p. This is not the YouTube test as of yet. Uh, go, go bigger. Okay, this is fine. This'll do. Is it lagging on 720p? Or is it just their video? No, it's lagging on 720p. Speaker's kind of loud. making the poor thing struggle. Let me just say for the browser test and for that slight YouTube test, the poor thing is already struggling right there where the motherboard would be. It is pretty hot, that area. I mean, not hot to the touch, but I mean, it's warm. Has YouTube installed yet? No, it hasn't. It's still just pending. Fine, let's go back to browser then. Let me go to YouTube in the browser and I'll do the Costa Rica video test in 720p. Because it's in the browser, I don't expect it to be fantastic, but we'll try. I'm typing and nothing's coming up. Hang on, oh, there we go. Counter-Strike to Rika. Let it lag. What did I do to it? Did I break it? There we go. It's 720p. This is 720p. That's a very slow sloth. Look at him go. Wow. Um, the video looks nice-ish. Kind of. Why does it feel really, really slow? Like it's running at about 50% speed. Is it just me? I don't know. As I said, it's in the browser, which the browser and YouTube don't really go well together. I'm really doubting this device as it is. Calculator looks like a shitty calculator. That's nothing unusual. Calendar, camera, oh God, camera. Okay. It has autofocus, that's one good thing. It has HDR, that kind of works. In settings for the camera, eight megapixels for the rear, as well as video quality being high, and EIS was also on. Swap to the front camera, it looks a little something like this. And if I go to the camera settings, five megapixels, and the video quality was also high with EIS on. I have done the camera test at this point in time. Won't really spoil anything as of yet, but it is quite confusing with the results that I did get from this. But I can say that autofocus does work. Bit of a slow shutter, but that's okay. Well, let me splice in the photos and videos that I took with our good friend, the XGODY S20 Plus, and um, enjoy what you're about to see.
Alright, here we are at the video test for the Xcode DES20, I think it's called. We have EIS on, which kind of does work. It just makes everything kind of look like it's in a bowl sort of thing. We go down to the froggers though. Do we have any autofocus? No, but we have manual focus, which is fine. It will do. I've already done the front camera test, and that honestly looks better than this. But I could be completely wrong. The Muppets there. Actually, I might have autofocus, to be honest. EIS is definitely working to some extent, though. An x phone actually doing something right. Amazing. Oh, there's the bolts there, looking good. And Stuart and Mick just standing there, looking pretty happy as usual. He's cheeky. Maggie the magpie, the fox cat thing that's got grass growing around it that I haven't named yet. The lemon tree with no lemons, but there's this really cool looking flower thing. There you go. And the faraway aircon, right on sunset. It's a little something like this. Can we see a breeze there? Whoa! Can we see a blob? That's like 30 FPS there. Okay, well it's midnight and I'm trying to do the LED flash video test. And it kind of works if you go up close to an object. But taking photos results in it all looking blurry and stuff. So, not sure what's going on there, but if I stand up, then you can't really see much. It kind of works, for the most part, kind of. I'm not as bright as the DJ-1000. Well, there's Ripley, with glowing eyes. You want your belly rub? There's your belly rub. Do you like the x -Gody? Probably not. No? Maybe? Well, you're already rolling around, so maybe you do like it. Maybe you give it five stars. There you go. Okay, here's the front video quality for the x -Gody. I've already forgotten the name of the thing because I'm doing the camera test before I've actually done the review of this thing. It's the S20, I think. Something like that. It's the S20, I think. Uh, does it have focus? No, no manual focus, no autofocus. This is with EIS on as well. It's not half bad. It looks okay on the display. I'm surprised the EIS actually works. It's not too bad from x -Gody, I'll say that. Night shots. Pretty useless. Front camera. Not... Too bad, photo-wise. Yeah, the rear camera takes alright photos with autofocus. HDR kind of works as well. And the resolution for the rear camera is 8 megapixels. But we had 480p video on the back and the front camera. Why x -Gody? Why would you do that? This camera is definitely capable of doing 720p video or even 1080p. No, 640 by 480 Let's just stick that on there. No one will know. I think I spoke over this in the last x -Gody video. They're selling these phones fairly cheap and with decent specs. But realistically, you could just get a prepaid phone for the exact same price and it will probably offer better specs. It'll be locked to a network, but it'll be a lot better than some generic thing like this. But let's just say this is a welcome device that I have right in front of me. It basically is. The camera that's on this then isn't bad for a welcome device. But if we talk about this being an x device, I guess for them it's okay as well. It's nothing special, at least it works. The LED flash is useless by the way, but it tried. I just tried to install Minecraft Trial just in case, and it seemed to have worked. Does that mean YouTube installed too? Hang on, we need to check. Oh, that's why the Wi-Fi is extremely slow. Ah, okay, if I'm gonna try and do gaming on this and it's gonna be like two gigs that I'm downloading, it's gonna take forever. I'll just breeze over most of the apps real quickly. Face Unlock we've already been into, File manager, what does that look like? The default file manager, nothing unusual there. FM radio, do we need earphones? Yes, we do. What's on Australian radio on a Monday night at 9.37 p.m.? Static. Okay, well that's not too bad. The speaker actually doesn't sound too bad, I'll give it that. But I won't really say anything until I actually get to the speaker test. YouTube is installed. Holy shit, we'll come back to that. Gallery, Google messaging, Minecraft trial. I guess I'll come back to games. Well, music. Adele's on here by default? Oh, there's two songs. What is this unknown MP3? have to look up and see what that song is. That was definitely something. Well, that will be in the system files. Feel free to use that. The song by Adele is Hello, by the way. All right, BFG Division time with all the enhancements on. It's not the same experience doing a speaker test with all the enhancements off. They have to be on, okay? Is that as loud as I can go?
Okay, that sounded pretty terrible. Probably got to like 101 roughly. If you put it down to 50% volume, it's not too bad. But if you bump it up, then the speaker just can't handle it. I just switched off the sound enhancement. Let me see if that's changed anything. Actually, that has. Doesn't sound as distorted now, but it's very quiet. Very welcome to you, that's for sure. If you have the sound enhancements on, then it sounds louder, but also very distorted. If you have the sound enhancement off, it sounds okay, but it's also very quiet. I don't think I can get my way with this x Cody. So far, this is pretty lackluster in terms of performance. Battery life's also at 68%. The phone is still quite warm at the back. SIM cards don't work. YouTube barely works. The speaker is pretty crap. It's lying about the Android version. The camera kind of worked. That's my mini conclusion so far. Okay, well, let's continue on. Play Store search settings sim toolkit sound recorder what does that look like the usual vu meter there nothing to note torch application is stretched whoa yep on off on off and that would appear to be it with the default apps but i'll open youtube up okay i'm only opening youtube you can do it buddy there you go okay now the question is having the youtube app on this will that make it any better we'll do 720p 60 fps <laughs> your phone has 23 viruses neglect or clean <laughs> Faster cleaner, cleaner, 4.5 stars. We should install that. Faster cleaner by the cleaner booster team. <laughs> Wow, one ticket to get malware on your phone, that's for sure. I've set this to 720p then, so let's just see if it has made a difference or if it still struggles. Actually, I think it's fine now. Oh, volume all the way up. Yes, it is. It's just very quiet. It's all right, you can do it. Oh, yeah, there you go. Yeah, don't play YouTube videos through your browser on cheapo phones, that's for sure. Can it handle 1080p? If it can handle 720p, it can handle 1080p. That's not really a good assumption, but I'll just try that. Go on, kick in. Whoop, there we go. Whoa, hey, not bad, not bad. It's just YouTube at 1080p on a cheapo phone. It works. Can I pinch to zoom? Nope, that's as far as I'm gonna get. Quality looks reasonable. The display is definitely not the sharpest, but I mean, you know. For what it is, it's all right. So now performance wise, 1080p YouTube, we can get out of this. Let me try and get some games on this and we'll be right back. I've just installed a couple of things. I can't install Call of Duty. I can't install Geekbench. Uh, Genshin Impact obviously doesn't come up. I can install Free Fire and PUBG, but since I haven't tested them on other devices in the past, I'm not really gonna know the performance of it. So I've installed Grand Theft Auto 3 and Minecraft of course is installed. I think that's about as good as I'm gonna get with gaming wise. I've also installed some applications to check the specs as well. So we'll give that a go, but let's try GTA first then. Now it's GTA 3. It should work fine, but I'll put everything up to maximum. Let's see how this goes. Can't be that bad. Come on. Okay, looks smooth. Fancy. Drives what I'll do. Okay, Grand Theft Auto 3 seems good. No, it doesn't. Grand Theft Auto 3 is lagging. Kind of. It's stuttering. Let me just run over everything. Yep. Well, this is a bit surprising. I swear there's an MT6580 in this. <laughs> okay, I kind of went the wrong way. That's all right. And I'm just bumping into everything. I mean, I have it all on the maximum settings, yes. I mean, it's smooth for the most part, but it does have some frame dips here and there. Whee! Hey, with not much on screen, it's kind of fine. I'll just run myself into the ocean. Oh, I can't. Oh, yes, I can. Whee! That was fun. Let me try Minecraft real quick. It did not like GTA 3. Oof. That's a hot one. That's promising. The reason why I stopped doing Minecraft tests is because it basically just runs on anything. I haven't really seen it lag to a point where it's just unplayable. So I think it's pretty much an obsolete test for me. I used to put it on every single device I tested, but now it's sort of, we've gone past that stage. And also it is lagging. Well, frame dipping. Am I gonna see a title screen or no? 
Maybe not. Maybe it's still downloading stuff. That's why I haven't seen a title screen yet. You know what? I'm kind of getting impatient with this thing. I just want to check the specs. When I first played around with this, I thought, you know what? It's not half bad. It'll be good to test and, you know, play around with. Once I started doing anything else on this, it just refuses to do anything, doesn't want to do anything. Wi Fi is slow. SIM cards don't work. Nothing wants to work on it. Let's check the specs real quick. Go device info hardware. Let's actually check to see if it's an MT67, whatever it was. 1200 by 540 display, MT6735, Android. 6, 2 gigs of RAM, 16 gigs of storage, MT6737 quad core, system, Marshmallow, they lied about having Pi on this and instead have Marshmallow, screen is 1200 by 540, let me do the multi-touch, can't believe in the generic tablet video that I recently done a video on, I didn't connect the dots, it was a resistive touch screen, resistive touch only is one, and yet I called it a one point multi-touch, how redundant am I, five point multi-touch on this. 2 gigs of LPDDR3-1600 and 16 gigs of storage. Cameras, 8 megapixels and 5 megapixels, that's correct. Battery says 3,250 milliamp hours. For the kernel profile, power profile is 1,000 milliamp hours. Thermal, uh, 50 degrees. Yeah, that's about right. Uh, accelerometer, light and proximity sensor, that's about it for there. Let's open the other one up, system info. Now, if I do destroy this device, I will not be devastated, okay? I'm still devastated about the DJ1000 phone, but at least the seller has sent me another one, so I'm happy with that. MT MT6735, Android 6. MT6735 is likely the same as MT6737. Quad core processor, 16 gigs of internal storage, 2 gigabytes of RAM, 5.2 inches the screen reckons, that's not correct. Battery, 100 milliamp hours, that's not correct. CPU's down to 37 degrees now, which I'd probably more be on the lines of saying 50 degrees. Sensors, system info is trying to use the camera. I'll just allow that. I'll just allow that. We don't have a proximity or a light sensor. They're just generic. We have an accelerometer though, which did work. Cameras, okay, we just crashed. All right, let's uh, do secret codes. Let me see if I can change anything. Uh, engineer mode. That's usual engineer mode, okay. Face unlock, is this a different one? That's just the settings of face unlock, that's nothing special. And settings is just a testing menu, okay. So nothing too fun in there. The quick shortcut maker, let's see if I can do anything within here. Auto dialer, huh, this exists. Never seen this before. Delete, hot, warm, cold and full for 911. And it loops, why would you want to loop and call 911? What a stupid thing. 55 loops, okay, we'll just leave that. Face unlock is by elephant tech yeah okay finger launcher icon for face unlock what is this then is it the same it's the same factory oh okay that is the testing for the device let's try the other one. Oh, light sensor one lights sensor one factory test by king send time oh okay this is a custom one main activity test version test touch panel camera wi-fi all that sort of stuff what was the stuff i'm supposed to be opening up i can't remember set theme here we go Oh, it was zero bytes in settings, so obviously they've just deleted that. Unless it is in the system files, that could be the case. Switch app. Well now, hello. Let's do some magic. Switch fake 4G. So it actually is fake 4G. You know, I was saying before, oh, you know, Xcode sort of takes away some things that makes a welcome a welcome device. Well, no, they didn't. The boot animation is now Xcode and Vivo. So let me change it to Vivo. ROM, we can have 16 gigabytes or true. Let me show true. RAM is true as well. Switch fake 4G is true. You can also have 5G on this thing. Oh, let's have 5G. G, why not? Current phone model, the S20 Plus A9X or the Ace A9X. Camera, front 500 watts and back 800 watts. Let's have it as, I mean, I guess that was the resolutions that we got. And current version, Android 6. Let's see if I've broken it. And just like that, it's now a welcome. <laughs> did I put 5G on? I don't remember if I did. I think I did. So this was what was in the system files. And thus, I now have a welcome in front of me. There you go. Got there in the end. What have I done to this? I've changed it to the A9X with Android 6. Ah, there it is. Actual proper gaming test. Here we go. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Close to getting one. Just one. Going back into device info hardware, it still says 2 gig and 16 gig. And I guess that's the same with CPU system info. Yep, 16 gig and 2 gig. I'm just going to do one more thing in regards to phone calls. I'm going to set this to 3G this time. ROM... 
I should put 256 gig. I'll also change it to 8.1 as well. So now that I've done that to 3G, if I put a SIM card in, let's see what it does. Let's just see what happens now. If 4G still comes up, then it's likely a band issue or it just has fake 4G, which could be the case. But if it does work on 3G, then it was definitely an issue with it being fake 4G. I have no idea. Confusing Xcode is very confusing, that's for sure. Oh, I won't be able to take out the SIM card slot now because, um, well, it's kind of stuck now, isn't it? Or unless it'll magically work now. Oh, it magically works. Beautiful. 4G. Still, if I come to cellular networks, does it say 4G or 3G? 4G. Still there. I'll give it one more call. If it still doesn't work, then it's beyond me. No, it just lost reception. Okay, it's got reception. I'll call it now. That's a no. Let me just see if there's anything else within Quick Shortcut Maker, and I think that'd be it. All right, well, that's everything that I've had to look at on this Xcode S20 Plus thing. Since I've already pretty much done conclusions throughout the video, I'll just say it's not worth still going with Xcode. I thought maybe we'd have a bit of a redemption arc for Xcode and say, well, hey, this isn't too bad. It actually does have 4G. It actually does do certain things, but no, it's just still the same as all their other devices I've tested. There's nothing different. At least I know now they include an app to switch things within settings. So I should try that on the other Xcode devices and see if I can find them. No, it's still not worth getting an Xcode. Absolutely not. Stay away from Xcode at all costs. Even though their cheap phones do look appealing, no, just don't even consider them at all. They're basically welcome devices. At the end of the day, wouldn't really trust a welcome device to be my daily driver, that's for sure. At least we got this cool wallpaper that's probably pinched off something. I have to say, I've never seen a uh, fish poking out of a triangle like that. It's a bit unique. Okay, so maybe I've just had a bad experience with this Xcode and all the other past Xcodes. But fear not, my friends, for I have another Xcode to test. This is the Mate 10 Plus, and that has 3G. Maybe this will be much better than this thing. Clearly, it'll be a lot better. We'll have a look at that one day. But as for this thing, I'll just tear it down and we'll take a good look at the guts. We can call this one a video, I think. The most interesting part of this was finding the fake spec app. That's pretty much it. Everything else about this thing is just super generic. And what makes welcome devices so interesting, Xcode essentially strips basically all of that off. We could have had fake fingerprint unlock all. That could have been loaded on this, but Xcode chose to get rid of it. And so many other good things could have been included, but no, Xcode comes along and takes them away. Also, back glass can come off just like this because I've been in this before to stuff around with a charger port. Pop, camera bump off, and we do have a sticker, and we do have a sticker right there that says two gig plus 16 gigabytes. And also a connection for a fingerprint scanner that was shown in the advertising, but wasn't included in this one, obviously. Also, it has V31 carved into the camera bump with the uh, two legit cameras there. All right, now to take out about 16 screws or possibly more. Now, as I said, I'm gonna rip the shielding off. I'm gonna do my best not to destroy this, but if I do destroy it, it's not that bad. Oh yeah, 2020 this was made. It's got a sticker right there, 2020. This phone's been sitting around for a couple of months now, pretty much when I featured it in that job lot video. I've been looking at this going, oh, I really need to review this one day. Yeah, the other day I got that Xcode that I just showed before from Cashies, and I thought, oh, now's probably the time to look at this Xcode because it's piqued my interest just to see if maybe they're slightly better than the one I received from Xcode. I don't even think Xcode's made a device with USB Type-C yet. I think they're all still using micro USB. No, Xcode's still doing the same thing they were doing many, many years ago. All the screws are out, apart from this one that just is stuck in the frame. There we go, it's not stuck in the frame. To disassemble your Xcode, just stick a pry tool in between the frame and pop it off and you should be good. Buttons fell out. Essentially what we would see inside of a welcome device. Speaker down the bottom, the charger port that I pinched off another phone, vibration motor, the microphone is somewhere there. The battery is nothing. I'll Google that and see if it comes up with anything. But I'd say 3000 milliamp hours would be about right with this. Front camera is this little fella. It says 2M on it. Does that look like a five megapixel or a two megapixel camera to you? With it saying 2M on it and with it being that size, could be interpolating up to 5 megapixels. It could be a possibility. The 8 megapixel rear camera though, what have I stuck this in with? Oh, broke it. Ah, uh, there's a sensor. It's just really stuck down and I can't get it out. 
There you go. That says 5M on it. So I think it's actually five megapixels interpolating up to eight and two megapixels on the front. That would make a lot more sense, actually. Looking back at the photos, I'm going to say five megapixels. I don't know. You folks let me know. It says five megapixels on the camera. The code on the camera says five megapixels and two megapixels. The photos say eight megapixels and five megapixels. I'll let you folks decide what it's going to be. At this point, I'm going to rip the shielding off. Someone did say to use a hot air station to heat up that area and then the shielding will just come off. I think the reason why I killed the DJ phone was because I sort of dug the screwdriver in and twisted it and that's why I ripped up the tracing. So I'll just do exactly that with this. I think I just literally broke off half the processor. Whoops, pretty sure that's not gonna work now. I broke off a corner of it. That's fine, I didn't want this thing to survive. Fucking hell, where did that go? We do have a Samsung module just there. I'll Google that and see if that comes up with two gig plus 16 gig. I'd say that would likely be the case. And yeah, the MediaTek processor that I have slightly damaged. And I've also ripped up parts of the motherboard too. Maybe I'm just going a little too rough on the whole shielding thing recently. That could be the case. Otherwise, that's pretty much all that I want to look at within the Xcody. I just wanted to double check the cameras as well as the chips. And I think I figured that out. Well, it's still together, so I can just power it on as it is. And there's also a reset button there as well, which I completely missed. Just power it on. If it still works, I'm going to be surprised, but I think I've killed it. I think it's dead. Sure thing. Well, I'll display all the specs to the side of the phone so you can see what's actually running inside of this thing. Look, I'm still going to go 5 megapixel or 2 megapixel for the cameras. It just makes sense. But everything else is pretty much... Yeah, as it is. There we go. Yep, oh, it still works. How does it still work when I've done that much damage? I have no idea. It lives on another day. That's back together, that's back together. Does the rear camera actually still work? God, look at all the fingerprints. Oh yeah, no, I broke the autofocus mechanism. Please wait. No, I don't want to. It doesn't matter. I've done what I've had to do with this thing. I'll put it back in its box and it can live with the other clones that I have. Oh, I should have restored it back to Xcody. That's fine. That's all good. Well, that's it, everyone. We're done with that one. But I do have some good news to share with you all. I just checked and my list for tracking numbers of items that I'm receiving, the iPhone 14 Pro Max clone that we chose on my last live stream is actually already in Australia. We ordered it a week ago and it's already here in Australia. If it's actually genuine, well, a genuine fake, that makes sense, then I'll be reviewing that hopefully by the end of this week. If not, then it will definitely be done by the end of the year, providing that it's actually a proper clone and not a dud one like I received the previous time. But we'll have to see when I get it. And also I'm waiting on, yeah, another DJ phone, a cheapo phone that has a Snapdragon processor in it, one of the cheapest smartphones you can buy off AliExpress, and also a bunch of really stupid phone cases that you folks wanted to see. So hopefully I can showcase them all before the end of 2022, but I'll just have to wait and see if they do arrive in time. That was the Xcody S20 Plus phone thing. Not really much positivity that I can say about it. If you see an Xcody product cheap, don't buy it. Just leave it there. Let it go to e-waste. It's probably the best place for these things to go to, honestly. But now I have that Mate 10 Plus to look at as well, which will be definitely very interesting. But anyways, if you made it to the end of this video without using the timestamps, thank you very much for sticking around and watching through this mess of a phone that it was. But if you had to use the timestamps, that's all good. That's why they're there. And feel free to check the system files for this in the description below, as well as the pinned comment. There'll be also some apps to try on your own phone if you feel like you want to check the specs or use Quick Shortcut Maker to maybe open some apps. Although with Quick Shortcut Maker, you might want to use that at your own risk because you probably could do some iffy stuff with that. But regardless, they're linked in the description below. But yeah, if you find anything in the system files that I didn't see during my test, feel free to let me know. But otherwise, everyone, that's going to do it for this cheapo phone review. I hope you did enjoy this one for what it was. Nothing too interesting on this, just another very generic Xcody slash welcome thing. But hey, if this iPhone 14 Pro Max clone arrives, then oh boy, we've got something really good to have a look at. Thank you so much again for watching. I really do appreciate it. And please take care. Stay safe, be good people. And I'll see you all in the next video, which... I'm trying to do two videos a week until the end of this year, and then I'll go back to probably one a week. I'm just trying to just get through a lot of the things I've been meaning to get through, but I hope I'm not sacrificing quality. If I am, let me know. Until the next time I see you, please take care, and I will see you next time. I'm now going to go to sleep, I think, because looking at that x was slightly painful. Anyways, see you next time.
If you like this content, feel free to leave a like or a dislike if you didn't. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you all in the next video.